In this scheduling video, we're going to take a look at how to schedule a non-recurring or construction type job. This type of job is one that you're going to do. You're going to maybe do it in half a day, maybe do it in three weeks, but you're going to do, you're going to sit and get it done until it's over with and then we're done. Not, not recurring like uh, snow plowing or maintenance where we're going to go back every week. There's another video for that that you can watch. There's three ways to schedule a job or three places you can do it. First is from the actual schedule tab. So right here on the whiteboard, I can go down to add, uh, or I can go down to schedule jobs and I can click schedule a job and then pick the job name. I can also do that from the calendar view. So if you're using the calendar view on the schedule, once again, you got add job to calendar, that'll schedule that job as well. Or you can go to the jobs and you can grab the job that you wanna schedule and you go to the schedule tab on the job. And I can also add the calendar down there. All three do the same thing. They get this job on your schedule. So if I click add to calendar, in this case, I'm already on the job. So it already knows what job it is that I'm trying to schedule. If you get at it from the calendar, your first step will be to pick the job that you want to schedule. But in this case, I was already on the job. So it assumes I'm scheduling that job. First, you want to pick the calendar you want to add this job to. You could be scheduling anything for this job. So your first step is to say what calendar, and you've set up your work calendars. We discussed that in another video you're gonna pick what calendar you wanna add this job to. And this is a construction style job, so I'm gonna add it to my construction calendar. The schedule description is the default description for the job. You can change this if you want it to make more sense in a, in a, on a, a scheduling screen. You can remove the job ID if you don't use it, or you can add more information here if you want to. If the customer gives you a work order or you need a work order number, you can also apply that here as well. Next is the task. So what it's doing now is, it's reading the job in LMN time and saying, what task do you want to schedule? The job has to be set up as a job in LMN time in order for it to get on the schedule. That's the only way we know how many hours to apply to the job. And that it will also help us link what was scheduled versus what got done when the crews are out tracking their time against it. So in this case, if you want to schedule everything, you just click the top button there and they'll all get picked. Or if I just want to schedule two of the three work areas, you can pick whichever ones. I'll do them all for now. Click next, and now it's gonna ask us for the dates. So the first thing it asks for is when is this job starting on? And if you know, you can pick it. If you need to look at your calendar, you can pick the check calendar button. What the check calendar button will do is show me for my construction department, and you can pick by specific crew, or you can see all your crews where your next availability is. And I'm here over the Christmas holidays, but if I back it up to a busier time, that's something that it would look like. It's gonna show me my month by weeks and where I've got scheduling holes and where I don't. In this case, I don't have any work for schedule crew or install crew A starting here on the Monday. So I'll pick the Monday here to start it on. Using days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's gonna schedule my regular five day work week. If I wanna work Saturdays on the job, here I go, I can set that here but it's picked Monday to Friday based on the settings we have in our, our default work calendar for construction. Click next again, estimated man hours. That's coming from the job. So it's reading the job in LMN and then saying, okay, we need to schedule 257 man hours. You can change this if you wanna schedule more or less time because you've, um, your man hours aren't accurate. By all means, you can change that here, but this is what's gonna schedule by default for your job. Your buffer means it's gonna build in extra hours for problems with weather, equipment, that kind of stuff. So even though we're gonna hold our guys accountable to 257 hours on this job, that's what's gonna show up for them, estimated versus actual. You're actually gonna add 282 hours worth of work on your schedule to give you that buffer so that your jobs aren't always crashing into each other every time something goes wrong. Productive hours per day, driving or unproductive hours per day. These are pulled from the settings that we set up in our work calendars. If you haven't watched the, um, the work calendars video, that will explain these in more detail. Basically, these are the number of estimated hours per day that the crews actually work on jobs. And these are your unestimated time per day. So if you estimate all your time, every payroll hour each day into your jobs, you don't need any driving or overhead prep. It's already factored into your estimated man hours. If your estimated man hours on the job really just factors in job time, like on-site time, then you need to make sure that you've got some driving and overhead prep hours into your schedule 
so that you don't schedule the job too quickly. You need that. You need to know that an hour and a half of every day is getting lost driving and 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 doing prep work like loading the truck and unloading the trucks. Once again, if your estimated hours on the job already include that time, you don't need anything here. You can leave that at zero, and this should just be your full day payroll. I'll leave it like this. Most companies run it like this. Planned crew will be who we want to assign it to. I can leave it to unassigned, but in our case earlier, I looked at the schedule. I noticed we didn't have any work for install crew A, so I'm going to put it on install crew A. Planned crew size will be the number of people in install crew A on this job. Once again, I can change that, but that's the default size of install crew A job, so I'll, I'll leave it the way it is. And then we're going to round to the nearest either full day or half day or whatever you want to, to use. So then down here, I'm going to get the results of this schedule. It's a total of 282.7 man hours plus, and then your amount, mine will be 1.5 hours per day unproductive time or rounded time because I need to schedule this much unproductive time each day. It'll figure out that we need 10 days working nine hours per day with a four-man crew to get this job done. And if I make changes here, I could change this to 200 hours. You can see these numbers change down at the bottom. Let me set them back to where it came. So if I'm okay with this, and I can obviously you know, make changes to any of these factors, once I'm okay with this, I click next. You're gonna get a quick summary of what you set up. And then you click next again, and it's gonna give you a preview of the schedule. So more or less, we're gonna schedule 10 visits from Monday, December 8th through to Friday, December 19th at nine hours of time per day. So this will schedule a full day for your crew from those dates to the, to the uh, December uh, 19th. So we'll click finish and it says, are you sure? And you click yes. And now that job will be on the calendar. So I'm on the job screen right now. I'm actually looking at the job. So right now what's showing up is that I've got this job on my construction calendar. I've got 10 days scheduled starting May 8th and ending December 19th, or I'm sorry, starting December 8th and ending December 19th. If you wanna see the details, just click the details tab and it will show each and every day that's on the calendar and what crew it's been scheduled for and that kind of stuff. If you want to see it on the actual schedule, we can go to the schedule tab and there's two places to see it. On the whiteboard, if I back up to any of those dates in that range, uh, December 8th, for instance, I can see for install crew A, the Alberts front landscape job is on their schedule for that day. It's showing me that there's four men in install crew A and they've got nine hours worth of work, crew hours worth of work, or 36 man hours worth of work scheduled for that day. I could also see it on the calendar view. So if I flip the calendar view and remembering that I've scheduled that work for install crew A, I can look at install crew A's schedule here. And it's gonna show me there that I've got the Alberts front landscape job scheduled through there. You can see I've got a conflict here. I've actually got them scheduled for two jobs then. So maybe I wanna rejig the smiley job. I'll pull that down there and it'll move that job so that I no longer have a conflict during that time. I could also move some other ones if I wanted to, if they're going to work a Saturday there, move that around. Now I've got a nice clean schedule for install crew A. That's how to schedule a construction style job. Pick the construction calendar, grab your man hours, apply your uh, different factors, add it to the schedule, double check it to make sure you've got no conflicts, and you'll have a nice clean construction schedule ready to go. We'll get into editing that schedule in some other videos when you really want to look at moving stuff around, extending time or subtracting time from the schedule. We'll cover that in a different video called editing construction schedules.